Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Tonight I'm going to do a video on a knife I've had since the mid 90s and have used a lot. I carry it, or used to carry it, almost every day. I refer to it as my pocket toolbox. I'm going to go over it and then over the last week, my wife has purchased me a, a new one, and I'm going to go over it and explain as to why it is the one that I'm now carrying every day versus the other one, but we'll get into that. <clears throat> I actually had George over at East Squad 540 tell me I really needed to do a review on this, and I carry it so much and use it so much I never think about it so why I hadn't done it before now I don't know but the knife I'm talking about is the Swiss Army Swiss Champ now as you can see this thing is a hoss I couldn't tell you right off the bat how many tools this thing has on it it's got a small blade, large blade, has the wood saw, it has a file with a metal saw, and it has a fish scaler as well as a fish hook dislodger. I don't know if you can see that. Get up here a little closer. It's also marked off with a measurement scale on it. Oh. It has the trusty scissors. This being the Swiss champ. It also has a set of pliers that do have a small wire cutting notch in them. Get up here where you can see that. See it right there in the middle. Oh, it has a Phillips. Magnifying glass. And believe it or not, you can use this to start a fire. I've done it a couple of times. Sun has to be really strong. Has the standard flathead with the bottle cap opener and the wire stripper. Then it has the can opener, the small flathead. It has the tweezers, the toothpick, a ballpoint pen. You have the corkscrew. with an eyeglass screwdriver that actually goes into the corkscrew. Has a straight pin that goes in. Right there. <clears throat> it has, put it back up here. What they refer to as a wood chisel. Then it has another flat head small screwdriver. It has the all sewing needle. And then has that, which depends on who you talk to on what that's for. What I've always used it for is if you had a bundle, you could hook at and use it as a handle. <clears throat> but everything's got a purpose on it. It's big. It's bulky. I got this around 1995 as a Christmas gift from my parents. And it's been everywhere. Now, part of it, it come with... At the time, what they referred to as the SOS kit. I'm not even sure if they still make this anymore. But you would open it up. It's got a pocket there that had stuff in it. 
there are actually a few things down in the bottom of it. On the side, it had a pocket there, another pocket here. On the other side, had a pocket there, then had a pocket here for a sharpening stone, and a pocket on the other side for a pencil. Now, all of the stuff that was in this has made its way into an Altoids tin. And I'll show you all of this stuff that was in there. The flashlight wasn't in there that I've added. Neither was the snare wire. But the rest of this was in here. It had a little plastic sleeve that had graph paper inside of it. Inside of that plastic sleeve, it also had a signal mirror. It had band-aids which had been used and are long gone. This was the sharpening stone that was in it. It had a small mechanical pencil. You push this, the lid's out of it. I've got to put more lead in it. And then the lid would fall out of the end of it. And then you just take your finger, adjust it, let it up, and then there was your writing utensil. It had a sewing kit that had three needles, two types of thread, and a threader. It had this little bitty bundle of braided line in there. It had fishing line in there. I always thought it was odd. It had fishing line, but it didn't have any fishing hooks. And then it had two heavy-duty safety pins in there that I've never known why, but for some odd reason, these are not like a normal safety pin. They're soldered on that bottom end. They're solid for some odd reason. And then it had this in it. It had a little ruler and a compass with a bubble level in it. And I mean, you can look at it. It's marked on the back of it, Victorinox. But with that, let's see if I can get you turned around here to where we can see this bubble level. I don't know if I'll be able to get it around there good enough to see it. There we go. There is actually a bubble in the center of that. Let's see if I can get it up here. There we go. That you can use this bubble level. As well as the compass and the ruler. All of those, like I said, were inside of that SOS kit. But have since found their way into an Altoids tin. I actually have a small kit which is a waterproof 35 millimeter case that fits two Altoid tins and some other gear in that you can wear on your belt. Usually <clears throat> one of those is my fire kit and it always stays in my other pouch. But every once in a while, I'll put all of them in together and wear this, but not very often. Not anymore. <clears throat> Get that hook back up here. But uh, I carried this, like I said, a lot. I've used it for everything under the sun. Now, some of the drawbacks that I didn't like about this was a lot of times... Had to be careful with the blade. They don't have any kind of locking mechanism. And the tension is not real, real stout on them. There's no half stop. It's just all open or all closed. And there's been a time or two that using the little blade, I've actually got my finger with it when the blade's closed up. The other thing is with... 
either one of these screwdrivers there's no mechanism to keep them open so if you're using them applying torque have to be careful because sometimes they'll close on you there's no half stop on the Phillips but there is a half stop on the straight one with the bottle opener now <clears throat> that leads into the knife that my wife just re recently got me it is the Victorinox Ranger Grip Model 78. Uh, the difference between the 78 and the 79 is the 78 has a T-handled Phillips, where the 79 has a corkscrew there instead of the Phillips. And I went with that. It still has the sewing all. It still has the tweezer, or the toothpicks and the tweezers the difference is it still has the can opener and the bo bottle opener the only difference is is on the bottle opener the bottle opener is now set that when you have it open and you are using it as you apply pressure pushing forward on that this actually pushes back and locks in place. Let's see if I can show you. If you'll watch it, you'll see it move. That little bit pushing that back actually locks the back of that blade so that when you're pushing in on it, it will not fold up and close on you. That's one of the advantages of this one. The other is the main blade is one-handed opening and it locks there is a liner lock inside there that locks that blade into place now this is where that gets interesting to be a liner lock if you look and notice like most liner locks or unlike most liner locks there is nothing there for you to push on to push that liner lock over out of the way. This is where they got ingenious. The shield. If you push in on that shield, there is a tab inside that pushes that liner lock over out of the way and allows you to close that blade. The other advantage is the saw. This saw, compared to the saw on a normal Swiss Army knife, is a whole heck of a lot longer. It doesn't lock like the original. It's still just a standard back spring. It holds it in place. But you do get a whole lot more length, as well as the blade has a taller profile to it over the other one which makes it a whole lot stouter and if you look there's even a little bit of difference not a lot in the thickness of the two blades and to give you an idea of the length of the blade in this one this is the large blade in a standard Swiss Army knife and this is the blade in the Ranger Group. The features that I really like about the Ranger Grip is being able to open the blade one-handed and the fact that it locks. It is a whole lot longer than the regular Swiss Army, but it is nowhere near as wide. It has just the basic tools aside from the scissors that most people use I carry a multi-tool with me and the multi-tool has a set of scissors on it so not having them on the knife but having them on the multi-tool doesn't really matter to me because I carry both of them anyways I do like the grip of this one a whole lot better namely because it's thinner but it's also longer 
it's also longer. Where that one, you can hold the whole thing in your hand. But the safety features of this with the locking blade and so forth, so forth is what really has turned me on to it. I've done a little bit of whittling with it here at the house, opened some boxes, that kind of stuff. But I'm looking forward to getting it out and actually using it. Uh, played with the saw on it. The saw cuts just as fast as the other one. It cuts both directions like the saw on the Swiss Champ. So that, I'm glad they haven't changed that. They've always had a good saw on them as far as I'm concerned. Weight-wise, the Swiss Champ is a whole lot heavier than this one. But uh, hopefully, over time, when I get to use in this one, we'll uh, be able to come back and tell you what I think of it. The Ranger is going to be hard to beat the Swiss Champ as far as use for lack of a better way of putting it because I've done everything under the sun I've adjusted carburetors on weed eaters I've taken license plates off of cars that I've stopped I've used all the screwdrivers I've used the needle and the tweezers and the magnifying glass to get out splinters uh, the pliers I've used them on some minor wire bending and stuff like that uh, the fish hook scaler, I've never used it. The fish hook dislodger, I've used it a few times. The file, I've used quite a bit. The saw, I've used quite a bit. So, just the versatility of all the tools on this versus the tools that are on the Ranger, there's the big drop difference in the two. But like I said, I carry a multi-tool. So, if I need pliers, I never use these anymore. If I need a Phillips screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver, I use the multi-tool because the multi-tool I've got, they lock. They won't close up on you. Um, as far as the blade, big blade mainly was what I used. This one here is a whole lot more comfortable in the hand. The blade's longer, so, and it's also a little thicker. The big thing I've found with both of these is the blades don't have any kind of flat surface on them. If you want to strike a ferrule rod with either one of them, about the only thing you've got that you can use is the saw, the back of the saw. It's got a really sharp spine on it. But uh, time will tell whether or not I stay with this Ranger or if I end up going back to my Swiss Champ. So maybe in a few months I can do another video and let you know what I find out and what I've come up with. But that's all I've got for now. I'm tickled to death to finally have my house back. We've had a contractor here for three months, or three months, whoo, three weeks, uh, doing repairs from where the hot water line busted upstairs with the washer several months ago. So that's been a mess. My garage, I'm just now got it back today. It has been a tool bin for the contractor. So <clears throat> this is actually the first time I've really had a chance in the last three weeks that I could come in here and sit down. Everything was covered up prior to this. But uh, they've laid a bunch of tile, they've painted, worked a bunch of drywall. So yeah, I've redone a bathroom. We rounded a, a whole bunch of projects into one and done them all together while we had the mess. So instead of having two or three different messes here, there, and along the way. But uh, yeah, one other thing. I don't know if y'all saw it the other night when I was doing the update video on my hand, but I was talking about my knuckle being out of place. In here in the light, you should be able to see it. I've got knuckles in the line there. I don't have a knuckle there. That knuckle is way back here now. So if you look at both hands like that, you can see where that knuckle's moved way, way back. The orthopedic said the only way that they could have done anything with that is they would have had to have went in and done surgery 
pulled everything back into place where it would have been and then put a pin in it. He said with it healing like this, he says everything will work as normal. He said it'll be a little stiff. I've got a, just doing that right there. I've got a little bit of a pull right there that he said will go away. But he said all my function will be there even with that knuckle back that far. And the big thing was doing it this way was four weeks having surgery, putting a pin and all that would have been six to eight weeks, he said. So the recovery time's half this way compared to what it would have been the other. That's the main reason I would just went ahead and done this. But uh, like, share, subscribe. Hope you've enjoyed the few one-handed videos that I got to do and found some of the other things interesting. The little shelter project that me and the little boy built the other day. We actually got out Friday night and had a fire in front of it. Sorry about that, I accidentally hit the tripod. Had a fire in front of it. It was 53 degrees outside and it was 71 degrees in the shelter the way we had it set up. So I think it's gonna work out great, especially this spring with me and him doing some camping trips in the backyard he's not quite ready to go out into the woods yet uh, still a little area of coyotes and snakes and that kind of stuff so that a change I got a feeling over the next couple of years but we'll see what happens y'all have a good night I'll talk to y'all later